Hey, I'm CJ Maurer with The Gist. Welcome back to another one of our strategic HubSpot tutorials. Today, we're just gonna be talking about playbooks, what they are, how to use them, and how your teams, specifically sales and service teams, can be more consistent and effective. I'm actually starting this one right in the HubSpot knowledge base. Just a quick shout out to HubSpot. If you Google any specific HubSpot tool, the first thing that will come up is at least one knowledge base article that shows you what it is and how to set them up. And in many cases, there will be multiple articles around the same subject. So right here, what HubSpot says is with the playbook tools, you can create interactive content cards displayed in contact company deal and ticket records. When speaking with prospects and customers, your team can reference these and create standardized notes. So. Let's think about this, right? You have a team, maybe a sales team or a service team. For the purposes of this, let's just talk about a sales team, right? If you have a variety or like a large team of, you know, at least a handful of reps, if not more, as a sales leader or a business leader, there are certain types of standards and processes that you want to remain consistent with your team. For example, you probably want to have some type of formal discovery call or needs analysis before generating a proposal. A, a specific kickoff call when a paperwork is collected and a deal is submitted and you're trying to hand it off to the implementation team. Or if you have some type of managed services, right? You may wanna do quarterly business reviews to make sure everything is going a-okay, to identify any upsell, cross-sell, or expansion opportunities, right? So there are certain like pillars within your your team and, and how the process needs to work that you need to make sure stays consistent. At the same time, you don't want to script everything everyone on your team says and does. One, that would take too much time to do. Two, I don't think that would actually be very, very effective because you're like, you know, removing the, the personality and the intuition of your people. And three, I don't think anybody would want to work for a company where everything they said and did had to be scripted. That said, there is some benefit of applying some basic systems and guardrails to help your team at least follow the general milestones so that everything in your sales process can remain consistent and reliable. And playbooks are one of the best tools to do that. What is a playbook? Uh, I'll just pull up two examples. This is a sales needs analysis, right? This one is a quarterly business review. So you can see when you're building this playbook, what you're doing, and these are a little bit more on the comprehensive side. A lot of your playbooks could just have like two or three questions. Some of them may have like 40, I don't know. It's your business, not mine. But let's go back to the sales needs analysis, right? So this is clearly created with the idea of if you're conducting a thorough needs analysis for a prospect, for a B2B software or service organization, there are certain things that you need to collect. Right, and if you're a payroll or HR company, right, you must know the legal name, number of companies, employee count, current provider, source, right, basic information, and now you're getting into what are their pain points, what solutions are they interested in, so on and so forth. And when you build these playbooks, you can do everything from providing general notes and checklists for whoever is running the meeting to follow and support them, all the way to actual required fields where the playbook cannot be completed and submitted until all of these questions are answered, right? So a good compromise or a common scenario is, listen, there's no way anyone on our team can complete a needs analysis without gathering these five pieces of information. There are other things that you might also talk about and information that you might gather. We'll put it in there, we'll make it optional, but we're setting a standard that no needs analysis can be completed without these five things gathered, right? And you may have that for different types of meetings. So what you're giving your team is basically a structure to at least conduct the meetings in the proper way with what is essentially the minimum viable product, right? And then you can create a playbook for every single one of those meetings. Now, this also ties back to activity reporting. So one of the things that we always recommend is before you make your playbooks, define the major call and meeting types that you have, right? You may have a, uh, a prospect outreach, a needs analysis, a software demo, a proposal meeting. Uh, here we have like a referral partner or center of influence networking. These are a little cut off, but they're all there, right? Implementation meeting, quarterly business review, right? First define your call and meeting types. Then 
make a playbook for every single one of those types of meetings that you need, right? And what's beneficial too is not only will this playbook exist, but if I go into settings, right? Anytime a playbook is submitted, we can make sure that it logs as that type of meeting. Here I have a needs analysis that when the playbook is submitted, it logs as that type of meeting. What we also have are filters where we want to display this playbook anytime a deal is in the new prospect or qualified and working stage. So if I go into the deal pipeline and I have I click into a deal in the new prospect stage and I go down here in playbooks, look, boom, recommended right here. So now imagine you're a rep that's working a deal, Cunningham PLC, this is all fake data by the way, and, and I could just go right in here, boom. And now if I'm a rep, um, I'm working out of this deal because this is like my mission control, right? This is where this is where I can send emails, make phone calls, track activities, schedule meetings, but then I can also run my playbooks right here. So now as a rep, I have all of this filled out. And what's great is that this, these fields connect with actual deal properties in this instance, which means if the property is already populated, it's going to show up for me. If for some reason I had captured that or entered in that data before I ran this meeting, I don't have to do it twice. But if for some reason it's blank, right? I could do this and now it's going to save to these properties. Once I've satisfied the minimum viable requirements for the playbook, then I can just log this meeting and it will automatically log as, in this case, a sales needs analysis. So if I go over to my meetings, whoops, that's tasks. If I go over my meetings right here, boom, and all of that information flows in here. Then on your activity reporting, you can not only break down how many meetings everyone had, but which rep had those meetings and which types of meetings did they have. It's great for you know, holding your sales team accountable, but also for analyzing uh, correlation between certain types of activities and business outcomes, like close ratio or client retention or upsells and expansion. So here in the quarterly business review, it's the same thing, right? which logged as a meeting, logged as a quarterly business review, and it shows up only if the company is already a client. Makes sense, right? You don't do quarterly business reviews with prospects. So if we go into our active clients here and we go into Fernandez LLC, right? We're gonna have this playbook, quarterly business review recommended. And now it's a completely different playbook right? It's got some notes, opening relationship. Hey, how's your experience? What's one thing that's gone really well, right? These are just internal notes for your reps to make sure they conduct a good QBR and then anything that they need to capture. And once again, you can make these as simple or as robust as you want to, or as they need to be in those situations. So now by using playbooks, what you're doing is you're giving your team a simple structure to follow right? Your CRM can be used as a tool to literally enforce your sales policies, where it's not like you're, you know, you're in your, your all hands meetings or your sales meetings and you're, you know, sounding like a broken record. Hey guys, remember, we really need to do this. We really need to do this. No, it is now physically impossible for your team to work and submit deals without following these processes. Your CRM enforces your standards. But at the same time, it doesn't totally script them, right? They're free to, you know, work their their pipeline, create deals, run meetings the way that they that they like to run meetings, that they're successful. And you know that consistency is there, which is ever, ever so important as your team grows and scales, because it's harder and harder to establish and enforce policies with a growing and a larger team. So with playbooks, you get the consistency of how people run meetings, the consistency of, of tracking meetings, and it just makes things better for managers and reps alike. So huge fan of playbooks, definitely, definitely use playbooks. I'm a fan, that's playbooks. Anyways, I'm CJ Maurer with The Gist. Thanks again for watching. Uh, we put out at least one new video a month, and if you want a really great strategic HubSpot use case in your inbox every single Monday, then go into the description, click the link to subscribe to our weekly newsletter, The Spotlight. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon.